All right, so can a meal actually change your life? Well, for me, at least it did. And that dish was a carbonara. So while visiting Los Angeles a couple years ago, I was lucky enough to eat at Crossroads, an upscale vegan restaurant that had been on my list for a super long time. I ordered the carbonara topped with a plant-based yolk, and this actually did change my life because while I was into home cooking at the time, this dish was so good that it inspired me to take the craft more seriously. So today I'm making my version of the special dish for you. So let's go get it. All right, so while the star of the show is usually meat, which in this case is the pancetta seitan that we'll get to in a bit, the sauce in my opinion is the biggest key. So we're gonna start by making making a vegan version of a Parmesan and Pecorino cheese blend, which are the two grated cheeses that combine with the yolks and pepper to form the sauce. Bust out your blender and pulverize one cup of rolled oats until you have a fine oat flour. Just so you know, you never need to buy oat flour. You can just make it with regular old rolled oats. Don't get scammed by big flour, man. Now leave the oat flour in there and add one cup of raw cashews, a fourth cup of tapioca flour, a tablespoon of paprika, a tablespoon of sugar, two teaspoons ground mustard seeds, two teaspoons of salt, and two teaspoons of onion powder. Now blend this gingerly making sure to check on it every five to 10 seconds to scrape down the sides. The blender can turn the cashews into paste if they get stuck in one spot and you don't wanna get the clumpy sauce. Next up is the vegan yolk sauce and we're gonna do a version of this from my eggs Benedict episode. So grab your blender and add 7.5 ounces or about a half a can of pumpkin. Do not use pumpkin pie filling unless you want fall flavored carbonara, which would be absolutely disgusting. So just watch out for that. A half cup of unsweetened and unflavored vegan yogurt two tablespoons of nooch, a half teaspoon of MSG, one teaspoon of salt, one fourth cup plus two tablespoons of aquafaba, two tablespoons of neutral oil, and one teaspoon of tapioca flour. Now go ahead and blend. Once absolutely pureed and there is no graininess left over from the pumpkin, pour it into a container. However, since we're gonna garnish this baby with a plant-based yolk, we need some of this to have a special ingredient. So pour half a cup of the yolk mix back into the blender. And while it's running on low, sprinkle in three grams of calcium lactate. This is the magical stuff that's gonna help us create the sphere around the yolk. Once combined, pour your small yolk batch into a separate container away from the rest of the yolk mix. To a pot on low heat, pour in your larger batch of yolk sauce, the one without the calcium lactate. While that gets warm, measure out a half cup of your cheese mix into a bowl and make sure you get rid of any lumps by whisking or using your hand to crush up any larger bits. Now pour that into your yolk sauce and whisk vigorously, again, on very low gentle heat until the sauce is smooth. Oh, yeah. Now grab your favorite brand of high quality spaghetti and follow the box instructions to cook it to al dente. And then make sure you do this absolutely essential pasta twist or you could just put it in like a normal human. Just don't break it in half, okay? Now, before we finish the sauce, let's get meaty. Now, traditionally, carbonara has a meat called winchale. And well, since I've never had that before, I can't replicate it. So we're gonna use the next best thing, pancetta. From my recollection, it is like a cross between prosciutto and a thick cut bacon. So I'm modifying a version of Jen's prosciutto recipe over at the amazing channel, the Satan Society. To get that fatty and meaty color and flavor, we're gonna make two different balls of gluten. For the meaty boy, mix 100 grams of all purpose flour with 2.5 cups of cool water that has been dyed with an eighth teaspoon of vegan red food coloring. Now knead it just enough to combine. Jump right back in and then mix 450 grams of all purpose flour with 1.25 cups of water. No dye this time, this will be our fatty McNatty layer and use the same kneading process. Cover both with cold wawa and let rest for one to two hours. Once these are rested, it's time to use the wash the flour method to get the starch out of the dough. For those of you new to the process, it is essentially getting rid of the starch through massaging the dough underwater so that only the protein, or as we call it here in these parts, gluten, is left over. Mine took about five washes and I changed the water each time it got around this milky white. On roughly the third wash, it started to break apart and then as it always does, it magically all came back together. So don't worry if that happens to you. The end of the fourth wash looked like this with quite a few little starch balls hanging out in the gluten. And here is what it looked like at the end of the fifth, completely void of starch. Doing this will give us the ultra dense texture that we need for cured meat. Now do this process, but with the other ball. The starch will be a little harder to see against the white, but just hold it closer to your face. Once washed, give them another rest so that they drain out excess water while we prep the seasoning paste. So to a sauce pot, add one fourth cup of vegan red wine, two tablespoons of miso paste, one packed teaspoon of brown sugar, two tablespoons vegan Worcestershire sauce, two bay leaves, 
and one fourth cup of grated purple onion. Now important note here, you must use a grater and you need to use the finest shredding side you have on there. The finer, the better. Microplane would also probably work for this too. You cannot, I repeat, you cannot use a knife to do this. It will not work. Then on top of your onion, add three to four small, finely minced cloves of garlic. Over low heat, simmer this from a sauce to a paste and then remove from heat and let cool to room temp. Pry apart your resting gluten, no matter how bad they want to stay together. First up for the seasoning gauntlet is our white fatty ball. So drop your boy into a large food processor and add one teaspoon of salt, a fourth teaspoon of garlic powder, a fourth teaspoon of onion powder, and a fourth teaspoon of MSG. Now start with a slow pulse and gradually bring up your speed until you've cut the gluten into tiny little chunks. Combine back into a ball and let it rest, while we season the meaty part of the gluten in the food processor. On top of the gluten, add your seasoning reduction after removing the bay leaves, and then on top of that, add one and a half teaspoons of mushroom powder, two teaspoons of salt, half teaspoon of MSG, a fourth teaspoon of ground white pepper, a fourth teaspoon-ish ground allspice, a fourth teaspoon-ish also of ground fennel, and a couple cracks of fine ground black pepper. Then slap that gluten around until all of the seasonings are combined and you've chopped it into teensy bits. After resting separately for another 30 minutes or so, it's time to combine. Lay down your red meaty gluten first and attempt to spread it out into a squarish layer. Then thinly stretch your white layer. It's okay if it tears and layer it as well as you can on top of the red. Then roll that on up like a yoga mat. This will result in a little swirl of fat at the end of the final product. Now wrap that like a burrito in a cheesecloth and then wrap it one more time. Tie it with kitchen twine and we're ready to set sail to this ham boy. Go ahead and use your favorite stock. I have this special ham flavor bouillon I bought online and then drop your future pancetta in there and make sure it is covered in water and slow cook it for three hours. All right, so unwrap your little meaty man and to cut the seitan for the carbonara, you'll want roughly half inch thick slices and then you'll wanna cut them again into easily bite-sized pieces. I like to try and get a little bit of each color into each bite. Now generously add oil to a pan and saute these until they are just a little browned. Since it isn't meat, we don't need to worry about any undercooking. Isn't that nice? Take it off the heat and let it sit there while we finish the rest of the dish. So I recently covered how to make these plant-based yolks in my last video. So for a quick refresher, create your alginate bath if you haven't already by combining 700 milliliters of distilled water and streaming in five teaspoons or about 18 grams of sodium alginate. This lasts a while in the fridge after you drain the bits out from the last batch. So think ahead about how you can use this for various meals. Take the yolk mix we added the calcium lactate to and then scoop about a tablespoon and a half into a ladle. In one quick motion, squeegee the mix into the alginate then form into an oval the best you can with two spoons. Let it sit there for about a minute and then transfer it to a bath of water. All right, so let's finish the carbonara. Drain your al dente pasta, reserving one cup of the pasta water, and to the warm sauce, add your nudes, along with roughly one fourth cup of the pasta water to help loosen the sauce. Once mixed, add in half of your cooked pancetta, and then once everything is hot, we plate. Twirl your pasta onto a heated plate, thoughtfully place bits of your pancetta on top, sprinkle some of the cheese mix, and then generally crack some fresh pepper and the coupe de grace, top with a warm yolk, and now we taste. Y'all, this is so good. It's rich, but it's still flavorful, and I'm always surprised by how the pepper is elevated by the sauce. It's something you just can't stop eating. So if you like this, you'd love my Eggs Benedict video where we turn these same yolks into a perfect plant-based Eggs Benny. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and until next time, y'all, be nice to each other and keep cooking.